Welcome to another episode, a special episode of Eat, Smoke, Drink. Today, so just a little context, I believe in escalation. Um, I believe that if you want to do something, get obsessed and go down the rabbit hole. And so um, our tastings and our tasting group, um, I'm just, you know, aiming to push the boundaries and really, really um, escalate the shit out of it, right? So you start from starting whiskies and you end up with ridiculous whiskies like this. Ridiculous rare, ridiculous, um, you know, it's basically it's coveted and sought after. Banff. Banff. I'm not gonna, t once again, I want you to Google about Banff, but it's a closed distillery um, and it is extremely rare to get. Banff, it's not very easy. It's collectible, people buy it as investments, um, but I believe that whiskey should be drank. So, here we go. Drank this whiskey. So this is a 1982, not quite the 70s range that Rare Malt sometimes puts out, or mostly puts out, but it's still within that pre-super duper industrialized different era whiskey. So it's 1982, 21 year old Banff, 57.1, boiled in April 2004. So, look, <clears throat> first of all, if you've tried Banff before, let me know your thoughts on them. If you've tried this one, I wanna know your thoughts, but let's get nosing because I can't hold any more. Oh my golly. I love these remotes. So, these remotes, it's not about how expensive they are. It's not about how rare they are. It's not about flexing. Um, it's not about brag rights or street cred. What it is, is it's very conte contextual. Contextual. Um, when you have whiskies today, they're very different to the whiskies of the past. Especially when you go back to the 80s and 70s, they're very different. So spirits distilled in that time is very different. But closed distillery, distilleries are even more different than even modern expressions or old expressions of those modern expressions. Um, closed distilleries, it is time travel, snapshot of how they did it. It's closed for any known reason. Um, maybe because it wasn't that popular then, they didn't need it. Um, they didn't need the volume, so they thought, no, let's just close it. It's not making enough money or it's a drain on whatever. Um, but it's not about is the whiskey good it's not about that as well it's it's about the experience of the whiskey right so I will tell you if I think the whiskey is quaffable or if it's a super interesting whiskey um, for the experience of the whiskey um, and I'm not sure about this one but rare malts have never disappointed me so far because it is a snapshot back in time of how whiskey was made back then so you can't compare it to you can't you can't um use the old adage of you know is old whiskey always better whiskey well there's old whiskey age wise and there's old whiskey era wise this is an era of old whiskey um 21 is not that old by today's standards but the era is what's old about it and that that can only come through context and you can never be academic about it. You can't judge about it until you have tried a shitload of whiskey. And that's what we aim to do. That's what I aim to do. On the nose, immediate nuttiness. Like it's immediate nuttiness, a very faint hint of brand new Band-Aid, the glue. I can get the smoke straight away. Like a coal smoke. Like a coal smoke when the coal is just dying, it's slightly smoldering. Now, I don't know if they peated this one, I'm pretty sure they would have, but the peat is more coal and soot and smoke as opposed to a resiny peat. Mmm. It's got brown sugar, vanilla notes. Coconut, I'm, I'm, I'm presuming that there is a good component of bourbon cask in this. But it's very nutty. I'm trying to figure out what nut it is. I think it's pistachio. I think it's pistachio and a, um, a, a very, like a condensed fig, fig jelly. Like a fig jelly. Fig jam, so I say fig, fig jam. Pistachios and fig jam. On the back it says walnuts. I'm not getting any bitter walnuts. I'm getting pistachio and fig jam. Candy ginger, white pepper. And a very faint hint of leather, like, a, like an old leather, old wet leather. There's a minerality to it. 
a herbal note to it. I can't quite tell you what herbs. I'm trying to just get some fresh air to refresh my nose. Rosemary and a hint of lamb. Yes, rosemary and a hint of lamb, but really strange. The flowers. Okay, the flower, I can't quite, um, I can't quite tell you what it is, but in Philippines there's a flower called Sampaguita, and that smells like that. I think it might be jasmine flower, but it is, they use it in garlands, um, festivals and religious festivals and churches, and it smells like that. And I don't know if that is because it's been um, it's been bottled in 2004 and it's been in a bottle for a long time, but um, I can smell burning glass in there. It could be the OBE, it could just be the soot, but a little bit of that burning soot, that glass smell. So Sampaguita is an Arabian jasmine flower. So from now on, I'm gonna to refer to it as Arabian jasmine flower because it sounds more exotic than normal jasmine flower. So this is everything, the nose is a bouquet. It's got fruit, it's got herbs, it's got sugar, it's got smoke, it's got soot. Now let's taste it and see what it's like. Oh wow, wow, like I said, remote. Does not disappoint. Oh. It envelops the tongue like no other whiskey I've ever had can and does and yeah it's, it's just the rare malts it's just the old style the way they um, the way they selected the barrel in the old style it's just so so good the texture the mouthfeel is so full it's like eating a it's like eating a super rich mud cake you know like it's just so enveloping it's oily the finish is long it's just lingering right there my mouth is still salivating I can't get rid of that flavor um, but it's like someone takes your mouth and just like shrink wraps it. It's just the flavor is so tightly packed. This is a very complex whiskey. Um, it's a lot going on. I mean, the first thing I'm tasting is a bit of citrus rind, a lime rind, and I'm getting the aftertaste of burnt sugar. Mmm, wow, the sweetness is intense. There's an intense sweetness to it, followed by an intense herbal note to it. Look, the sweetness is just a really sharp sugar syrup sweetness. Almost like a stevia-like sweetness, but not that shitty aftertaste, but that sharp sweetness. And then it's followed by a, like a smokiness, a sootiness, a bit of carbon, you know, the carbon deposits in the bottom of a camp stove. I can get a little bit of tannin. The floral nature is gone on the palate so much. Menthol heat, a peppermint heat, like a peppermint tea heat. The lamb is gone. It's pretty much a dessert whiskey, like a sweet whiskey. The lamb smell, the roast lamb and the, the herbs is not so prominent anymore. Apple sours, green apple. Apple sours and green apple. Wow. Co uh, a bit of co coconut syrup. Holy crap. That's a fucking good whiskey. That, that, is, that is such a cool whiskey to drink. I mean, maybe it's a placebo of the rarity of it, but the flavor is really, really quite out there. It is probably one of the most weird kind of um, flavors I've had. <clears throat> Can't really compare to anything else um, that I've had of recent time. Um, but that is a that is a phenomenal phenomenal whiskey. The barrel the barrel influence is not so great, um, but the soot the balance of the soot. I hate the word balance, but the balance of the soot and the sweetness is fantastic. It's like a smoked. I don't even know what's sweet and smoked. Like imagine having a, a, a cotton candy that's been smoked. That's probably the best way I can do it. Cotton candy with a faint hint of wood smoke and, and coal smoke. That's what I'm thinking. It's like the sh sweet sharpness. 
Look, it's just absolutely delicious. Now that I'm thinking about it, there's a slight maltiness cereal note to it, but I can't quite, almost like a, like bread, like a cheese cracker, but I can't put my um, mind to it. The peat, I can't really get the peat much, but the smoke is definitely present. Look, if you can get this, if you can get this, get it. Okay, yeah, just just get it. Um, just pull the trigger and get it because it is such an experience, a hell of an experience, and I think that um, something like this um, is getting more and more scarce and rare by the day. And um, and like I said, you know, when you get it, maybe just if you haven't had many old rare whiskies, put it aside first, and then keep trying, keep escalating, and then um, and then try it, and then keep it, try more, and then try it again, and you get that context eventually. You know, like like I said, context only happens with comparison and through experience. So um, you can only do that by drinking whiskey. You can't do that by reading a book or researching or, you know, you, you can't even do that by talking to distillers because everyone has a different palate. Everyone has a different journey of how they're gonna judge the whiskey. So yeah, so this is time travel. Welcome to the future, back to the future. Cheers, until next time I you eat, smoke, drink. Mm -hmm.